Okay, Linux fans, fair warning on this video. As I suspect, many of you will not be interested in this video because the software we're going to look at is not open source and it's not free and it's an office suite. But if you're still tempted, stay tuned. If you're a veteran Linux user, then you've had experience, I'm sure, with LibreOffice, or perhaps back in the day, OpenOffice, or perhaps even WPS Office. And while all three of those do a fine job, none of them are 100% compatible, or even maybe even 95% compatible, with formatting when it comes to the number one Office suite in the world, which happens to be Microsoft Office. That's been the one um, thing that many people in the corporate world kind of can't get over that hurdle. They work with a lot of Microsoft documents, so that's um, you know DocX and, and documents like that. And that's why I was excited when SoftMaker released their SoftMaker Office 2018 for Linux. So this is the first time they're offering this to Linux. Again, this is a paid app. It's $99 for their, I think, pro version, which uh, gives you five installations. And this is truly cross-platform. So this will work on Windows. This will work on iOS and Android. And now, of course, Linux. So one aspect of this, which was kind of intriguing, and it kind of makes sense, is that they've got a fourth part. So you've got here what they equate to PowerPoint, which is, um, or excuse me, no, this one, presentation, equates to PowerPoint. Uh, TextMaker, of course, to Word. And then PlanMaker equates to Excel. And that's why the icon, seeing the P there, uh, I thought for a minute there, that equated to PowerPoint. But so you've got those three parts, but there's a fourth part in um, the Linux version and so we're going to scroll on down and that is Thunderbird powered by SoftMaker so what is that I was intrigued by that <clears throat> excuse me so essentially this is a themed out version themed by SoftMaker with various plugins to give you kind of maybe some comparison to Outlook because that's part of Microsoft's office suite um, so you get calendar, you get task management, you get, of course, email, uh, contacts, and I believe notes. And so I've read in a couple of areas, it looks like they've taken Thunderbird, uh, added some additional icons, some additional theming, and then made sure that all these various plugins are in and working for a complete, um, almost like a PIM, personal uh, information manager. So, kind of interesting. Now, I didn't get this part of the download because I'm using the 30-day trial. And so, uh, I pulled this in from the Arch user repository. And I get these three bits, but not the Thunderbird portion. So, just kind of wanted to cover that. Well, let's jump over here and look at... We'll start off with TextMaker, the equivalent to Word. And you're going to get a little pop-up here that'll say thanks for your interest. You're going to get a full 30 days. I uh, don't believe this is limited in any way so that you can really dig into it and try it out. Now, I've tried this out, and I want to talk about that. I want to talk about some of the formats, pulling those things in and pulling them in from Word, pulling them in from PowerPoint, and making sure that the format stays intact. That's the key thing. If you're someone in an office environment, you've been wanting to switch to Linux, but you know that you know LibreOffice doesn't do the best job, WPS doesn't do the best job at making sure that that format pulls over or then saves properly, I think we've got something here that's going to do the trick and may allow you to get over that hurdle and just come on over to Linux um, You know, if this is what you've been waiting for is the ability to work with Microsoft Office documents. So we're going to click continue and what you're going to see first is the ribbon menu. Now 
you're going to get a pop-up. So I'm going to jump over to the settings area and actually show you the pop-up that you're going to get. It's an option or a, a group of options for you before you launch in. So you'll do this one time. So we're going to jump over to file. And again, you've got this ribbon interface here and it's really nice. Uh, we'll go to customize and then user interface. So this is actually what you will see uh, when you first launch in for the first time. Uh, you've got ribbon up top and classic menu here at the bottom. And this looks more like what you'd see in, say, LibreOffice, for example. But you've got three options here under the ribbon. You've got a little color. And it, and it differs. This color differs from, um, from what you're in. So here we're in TextMaker, which is red. If you jump over here to Plan Maker, that's going to be green. And then if you're here at Presentations, it's going to be orange. So you could add a splash of color or you could go with just your standard gray. And I'm going to switch to that. And that means it'll relaunch. So we'll say yes. And I've done some testing. And the testing that I've done so far has got me really, really encouraged. I'm not ready to say to you, hey, this is going to have 100% compatibility with Microsoft Office as far as keeping all of the formatting and everything intact. I'm not ready to say that yet, but what I have seen by pulling in various Word documents, various uh, PowerPoint documents, what I have seen is so far it's better than anything else I've tried, be it LibreOffice or WPS Office. It's better at keeping all that formatting intact. The other thing I'm really, really thrilled with is how professional everything looks here. The it, it looks like uh, there was a lot of time and care spent in keeping uh, a ribbon layout and a UI that would be familiar for anyone coming from Microsoft Office that's used the ribbon. You're going to immediately be able to find your way around here. Um, I like this even better than WPS's attempt at a ribbon interface. So uh, if you start up here at home, you're going to see you know font selection here, and we could scroll that up. Let's go up to... I believe there's Arial, so we'll go to Arial. And if you'll look through the list of fonts, uh, you'll find that a lot of what you'll find within Microsoft Office is available there. And if it's not, you could also install, I believe, the core fonts um, into your OS, and then that would be an option here as well. Um, but you've got everything from paragraph layout uh, to styles. If we go to insert, you're going to see the typical insert a photo, a text frame, a table. I mean, I think that everything is here. I, uh, I haven't pulled up Microsoft Word to check and see what's missing. But as I scroll through everything from comments to header and footer, it, it looks like everything's really in place here. If you go to layout, uh, margins, orientation, so on and so forth, references. And it's the same with each particular um, module here, be it Plan Maker or Presentations. The Ribbon UI really flows and, and includes everything it needs to in relation to what you're used to from Microsoft Office. Now, if we go over here to File and we go to Options, you're going to see some general options where you can, um, you know, number of undo steps, appearance. So you've got options there, sounds, fonts in the font list, things like that. Uh, let me see here. Actually, let's go to fonts. Yeah, I thought this was pretty nice. You can actually go in, and if there's fonts that you just know you're not going to use, uh, just uncheck those, and now they're not going to show up in your list. So you could really narrow that down to you know, only the fonts that you typically use, which I think is very nice. And perhaps you can do that within Microsoft Word. I've just never never found it. Um, so those are kind of like general core options. And then you have Customize. And Customize lets you customize the Quick Access Toolbar. So that's this down here. And then um, you could show that as a separate toolbar if you chose. Then you can also customize or minimize the ribbon. So it'll give you that look there. So if we go back in, Customize. And then if you go in and customize the ribbon, this is going to look very familiar to you. If you've ever customized the Microsoft Office ribbon, um, this is laid out pretty much the same from what I can tell. So um, 
and it's and that's a good thing. It really is. Um, again, most of the world uses Microsoft Office, and so if you're going to be uh, using Linux as your main operating system, the fact that you have an option here, since Microsoft is not making that available for Linux yet, um, now you've got an option. Yep, it's going to cost you money. Uh, sure, it's not open source, but again, I just want to stress, if that's one of those hurdles for you, you know, if you've got one or two things that, gosh, I'd love to use Linux, but, um, I, you know, I can't use it I have to work with Microsoft documents, you know, uh, formatted documents, then then here's something that I think is going to turn out to be an extremely good option for you. Um, so if you go up and you go to save, so if we just wanted to save this document, you're going to see a choice here. Save this as a Microsoft Office file format. So it could be DocX, and then if it's Excel, XLSX, and then PowerPoint is PPTX. And uh, the other option you have here is the SoftMaker Office file formats. So for me, I would probably never use this. I would default to here because if I'm going to be working on another computer somewhere else or in an office environment or, you know, at a hotel where I pull up the PC, um, you're going to have Microsoft Office loaded on there. You're not going to have SoftMaker Office file format loaded on some PC that's set up at a, a business center in a hotel, for example. Uh, but this is still an option for you. Um, you've got PDF export here. And all right, so we're going to jump over. I'll just quickly, before I ramble on too much here, I'm going to quickly launch over to Plan Maker so you can see that. So that's their version of Excel. And again, the ribbon UI and layout here is going to be really familiar to you. You've got all the formulas here. Really, I don't think there's a thing missing. Um, I'm sure someone who is really, really into Office or Excel, for example, I don't use Excel that much. Uh, so there may be some things, you know, someone that's a hardcore Excel user gets in here and goes, ah, you know, it doesn't have X. Uh, but uh, just from the little bit of time I've spent with it, it looks so full featured. Okay, what I wanted to point out is, so I pulled in a couple of Word docs uh, in a quote format, and I pulled in a uh, presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, pulled those in, looked at all of the formatting, you know, the text boxes, the images, was everything in place as it should be, and kind of did a comparison there. And what I found is with the exception of maybe one or two different areas in, say, a seven or eight page document to where maybe an image was shifted over just a little bit too far one way, it was completely intact with the, the formatting and the layout. And that's been the problem that I've experienced with especially LibreOffice and even WPS Office. So it was super encouraging to see that. Then I did a reverse. I created a document added some images, and I did this on another system, on another one of my Linux systems, um, so I don't have it here to pull in for the video. This is my main system, and uh, otherwise I would show you, so you'll have to just take my word for it, or it's free for 30 days, download it, and try it yourself to see if you get the same results, but I'm super encouraged by what I'm seeing, and you know, maybe at, uh, on day 29, I'll decide to spend the 99 bucks and and use this uh, so time will tell maybe I'll keep you updated on that as, as time goes and I use this as to how well it's working but I did the reverse and pulled that into Microsoft Office you know, I've got a Office 365 account for my business and pulled that in and everything stayed intact so very encouraging wanted to share this with you I know there's a number of you out there right now who would not even consider this because it's not open source uh, and I know that there are many of you out there who would not pay for software like this. You're perfectly fine with LibreOffice or WPS, and I think that's awesome. So I'm just speaking to that select group out there that's looking for the ability to work with Microsoft documents in a way that will allow them to use Linux full-time. So hopefully this is going to be something that will help us all there. All right, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.